Hello all, welcome to the Truth Show. In this video, I will be talking about the legendary dancer, actress, humanitarian Eartha Kitt. Did you know that she was conceived by rape? And the rest of her stories get darker and darker and then very inspiring. Now you all know I like to give a brief intro before I go in deep, so here we go. Here we go again. I mean, this is the Truth Show and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. I mean, this is the Truth Show. Oh, yes. Eartha May Keith was born January 17, 1927. She was born on a cotton field in the town of North Carolina, South Carolina. Her mother was named Anna May Keith, who was part of Cherokee and African descent. She didn't know much about her father who reportedly raped her mother, who may have been a white man. Then later, the man her mother stayed with didn't like Eartha because she was too pale. But guess what? She may not have been her real mother anyway. Meanwhile, she was forced to live with her auntie where she was heavily abused in ways unimaginable. But she managed to still graduate from Metropolitan Vocational High School that's been renamed the High School of Performing Arts. Kit later became a member between 1943 and 1948 of the Catherine Dunham Company. While there, she recorded Let's Do It, Champagne Taste, and C.S.C. Bon and many more French songs thereafter. Kit was a great dancer and very flexible and spoke many languages. Oh, and she was also very secretive about her age. You know what? Let me just give you a quick breakdown of many things about Eartha Kit, okay? Now, please notate this upcoming information is provided by various websites. You might find this hard to believe, but not everyone keeps their birth certificate neatly filed away where it can be found for everyone to view. However, a group of students from her hometown found the document in 1998 to reveal her true age, which is what I stated. That seems a bit suspect, but also kind of interesting since it laid to rest any doubt about, you know, how old she was. Here's what she said, and I must say it was boss and very inspiring. Here's what happened. In January, during the Lyndon B. Johnson administration, during a luncheon, Kit was asked by the First Lady Bert Johnson about the Vietnam War. She replied, you send the best of this country off to be shot and maimed. No wonder the kids rebel and take pot. Then later during a question and answer session, Kit stated, the children of America are not rebelling for no reason. They are not hippies for no reason at all. We don't have what we have on Sunset Boulevard for no reason. They are rebelling against something. There are some things burning the people of this country, particularly mothers. They feel they are going to raise sons. And I know what it's like. And you have children of your own, Mrs. Johnson. And we raise children and send them to war. For these comments, especially back then, made during this luncheon with Lady Bird Johnson, she reportedly made the first lady cry. It was so sad. Arthur Kitt suffered a great deal of backlash that forced her to leave the country for about a decade since her anti-war statements were taken the wrong way by those listening, you see. But she was okay. She just took her career to Europe and Asia and she made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Now... <laughs> The vindication that is brought to a performer by the audience is something that seems quite positive and overwhelmingly desired by most, but is also a fickle thing that Earth and many others may have discovered over time is bound to turn on them occasionally if they decide to let their inner feelings be known. Okay? Yeah. The two were like brother and sister in a way since they respected each other and stayed very close throughout their careers. It's easy to assume that Eartha was quite distraught when James passed away. Now, this one I completely agree with. You see, Eartha was a black woman, but she didn't feel as though she belonged to just the black community. since so she was mixed with different races, such as I. Since her fans were incredibly diverse, too, and they were the ones that helped to make her as popular as she became. In this light, she was a part of a larger community and you know, revealed in the feeling that she belonged to everyone in that same measure, not just a single part of the overall community. Now, Kit went on record saying that many men tried to lay her down, but not pick her up, okay? But there were men in her life that helped 
her reach new heights and utilize her potential well away from any surface where they might eventually lay her down okay kit won many awards done many movies tv shows and so on and so forth with her many career endeavors let's get personal and scandal Arthur was very career driven. Despite being rumored to have many lovers, but in reality, she really didn't. She had romances with cosmetic magnet Charles Revison and then banking heir John Barry Ryan III and later John William McDonald, who was an associate of a real estate investment company whom she later married on January 6, 1960. They had one child, a daughter named Kit McDonald, born on November 26, 1961. They divorced in 1965. Kit later lived in a longtime Connecticut resident that she converted a barn on a sprawling farm in morale section of the new Milford for many years. And she was also active in local charities and causes throughout the Litchfield County. She later moved to Pound Ridge, New York, but returned in 2002 to the Southern Fairfield County, Connecticut town of Weston in order to be near her daughter, Kit and family. May she rest in peace. <laughs> Now, there's, there's the two sides of Eartha Kitt, if I, I say, from the book, it seems. Mm. There is, there is the, the very vulnerable, innocent young girl mm. who was abused, as you say, and yeah. rejected. And then there is the extrovert person. Um, when does one character stop and the other take over? Are you conscious of the two sides of your character? Very often I am, and then sometimes I'm not. And when I catch myself realizing that I have reverted back into being Eartha May, I have this to is Eartha May, it. which is what your name was and when yeah. you were very poor yeah. and your mother actually passed you on to somebody else. Yes, she gave me away to a family that would use, that eventually wound up using me as a, a work mule. And my mother gave me to this family because the man that she wanted to marry said, I don't want that yellow gal in my house. Which meant that being an Ill 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 illegitimate child and uh, also the wrong color, you are not wanted by the blacks and the whites couldn't care less. So this black family, who had two teenage children, used me as a, whatever they could use me as a working person. And then I was also a, by the young gentleman in that family. Are you? Was, how old uh, were you then? I, I know people don't believe it when I say I don't know how old I am, but I really, I know somewhere I'm uh, way past 60. But how old were you then? Not way past 60, but I'm way past 50. But I was... Really, still about five, six years old. And in all those that times. abuse going on. Yes, and all of that abuse was going on, and I couldn't tell anybody about it because who would have believed me? And the young boy, he was not uh, the nicest kid in the world, and neither was his sister, who also, um, I, well, I didn't know anything about lesbians in those days. And uh, she too tried. And there were times when the whole family was gone into the fields or something like that, harvesting picking cotton or whatever they were doing, and we were left in the house alone, the two teenagers would tie me in what we call a croaker sack. I think you call it what, what potatoes mm. come in. Yeah. They would tie the sack around my waist and then tie me to a tree. And uh, with a peach tree switch, they would beat my bottom until I was bleeding. And I only had one thing to wear, and that was also made of potato sacking. And um, uh, they... Well, I can understand how following something I've been several years of that, but it's going to mark you for life. Well, you try not to have it. Leave a scar on you. Yeah. Emotionally or mentally, but of course. And even though the physical scars are gone. And uh, you start talking about it like we are talking about it now, and you try to not get emotional about it, but all of a sudden those feelings do come back. And the idea of them tying me to a tree, and you're not, you're not able to escape at all. Yes, and then you, you had a, an, an auntie, your, your, your mother's sister, who looked after you then in New York. Isn't that right? You went, you went to New York to your mother's sister, Auntie Mamie? Yes, Auntie Mamie. Did she look after you any better? No. My aunt was very, very strict. My aunt was a, a very tall lady. She was about six feet tall and also very fair in complexion, she's half Cherokee, very majestic looking. 
I was deathly afraid of her, even from the sight when I first saw her. I was terribly afraid of her. But she had no children of her own. She was never married. And I think that she brought me up north to New York out of a Christian duty, you know, because she got a letter from the South that told her that if I was not taken away from this family, that they would either starve me to death or beat me to death or work me to death. And therefore, she decided that she would take me on into New York, but she wasn't any better. She was you ran also away abusing me. You ran away from her, too. Yes, but, but I think God certainly has his funny ways, you know, because I was trying to get away from her, but where do you go? What do you do? I used to uh, stay away from her as much as I could, and I kept running away. And whenever I had a few pennies, I could, the nick, it was a subway, was a nickel, for instance. <laughs> and I used to get on the subway and ride from one end of Manhattan to the other, hoping that the conductor wouldn't see me because they used to have conductors on the subways at the time. And then get off on the other end and get back on, <laughs> and he couldn't see me. You seem to be. And just keep riding yeah. all night long until daybreak. Running but, away from your life. Well, I don't think I was running away from life. I was running away from rejection. I was running away from not being accepted. Have you, has that stayed with you? I mean, do you, do you find that, is that why you think perhaps you're an extrovert, that you're looking for attention, you're looking for affection? But Mr. Wogan, you know something? I'm not an extrovert. <laughs> I can tease as Eartha Kitt, but as Eartha may forget it. <laughs> I'm hiding under the, behind the bushes, behind the chairs, behind everything you possibly could, I could possibly find to hide behind. Because I never, have been with that kind of security within Eartha May that makes me feel that she will ever be accepted. I don't think Eartha, in myself, in my subconscious. And when I'm writing the book, when I was writing the book, I, I realized that more and more. And that's why maybe sometimes I, I am going around looking like an, the urchin that I really know I am inside of myself and not wearing any makeup and not caring about what I look like. That little ugly duckling has, was always told she's an ugly duckling. Nobody wants you. And she's trying so hard to find somebody that says, Earth mates, all right, you want it too. But nobody's done that yet. Maybe I have not given them a chance to do so, I don't know. But she keeps hoping. But you must, um, there must, people must have shown you affection and love in your life, is it that you can't accept it? The public and my daughter, yes. The public. Never a, If never, it wasn't never for a man. the public, a man, a man has always wanted to lay me down, but he never wanted to pick me up. And the men that did have real love and affection for me were the ones that never touched me. That was Orson Welles, Ruby Rosa, and there were, there were a couple of real love, strong love that men have had for me. Two of them, John Barry Ryan III and Arthur Lowe Jr. Mm. But then the mothers step in. And I think very often the mothers, particularly with boys who come from extremely wealthy families and they are the only son, they would rather them marry trash and marry someone of color, no matter how wonderful a person that person of color may be. You've been a, a tremendous survivor in the face of things that most people would not have survived. What, where do you find happiness? What, what, I have to find it within myself. Pleasure? And the wonderful feeling that you have when you're standing on that stage and that audience gives you that applause and says, Eartha, it's okay. You're still here and we're glad that you're still here. And when I see the young people, particularly today when everybody knows I'm past 50, whatever the number may be, does not seem to matter to them. When I see the people my age who have grown up with me in this business, they're in the audience and they've brought their children and their children's <laughs> children. Believe me, that makes me feel that I really am a worthwhile person. 
But then it's something else when I go back to the dressing room, because when I take off the makeup and I'm not Eartha Kid anymore, you say, okay, now, You're Eartha yeah, I'm, I'm Eartha May again. It becomes a testing ground. And I know that. No matter how hard you try not to, it's still there. I'm not afraid of it. And I'm very glad that I can have the feelings from that urchin. And I'm very glad that I have never tried to cover her up. I'm very glad that she's still a part of me. And I'm very glad that she will always be a part of me because she helps me do what she knows I have to do out there on the stage because there is where my survival is with that public and with those who, who know me well enough to realize that Eartha May or Kitty, whomever they want to call me, she's okay. Well, we're very glad that you've revealed so much of yourself and been afraid, unafraid to do so. And it's been a great pleasure to talk to you and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wogan. So devastating. May she rest in peace. She so inspires me and it's sad that her story wasn't told. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below on that note. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell so you get notifications when I do post more videos. See y'all later. Love you all. Bye. Yeah.